Hey guys, this is Adam and I have a question for you. Did you ever try to build application across multiple services and multiple components? If you did, you already know that creating a proper logging solution might be a tough challenge. But this challenge might be easier if you use the right tools. And the right tool for the job is Azure Application Insights. And that's the topic for today, so stay tuned. Azure Application Insights is your everyday monitoring service for your application in Azure. It's your application performance management service. And it's part of the bigger service Azure Monitor. And this is important because whenever you're going to be searching for some documentation about Application Insights, you're going to be redirected to Azure Monitor or Log Analytics because those services are tied together into one big service. So how does it work? First of all, let's imagine a scenario where we have web application with three pages, home, orders, and products. Those applications usually will call some backend service, like a web service which will handle all the requests, maybe generate pages, handle orders, products, and all the things within your web application. And then this web service might have additional services that it connects to, and usually it will, because in Azure, you pretty much develop everything using components. So this web service might call an SQL, some external APIs, or maybe your own internal APIs for some additional jobs. And for this kind of architecture, it's quite tricky to set up logging. And this is where actually application insights come in. Because first of all, you can set up application insights on your front-end pages for some client-side monitoring. This will pretty much work like Google Analytics. So it will track your user behavior on your front-end pages and some requests to the backend service. You can also install it on your web service or your internal APIs to grab the server-side monitoring of your application. And this will work actually within Azure or non-Azure services as well, because this is pretty much an SDK or an agent that you need to install. Notice that you cannot install it on external API or SQL if you don't have any control over it, but it will still allow you to track the dependency calls to those services, so you're still good. Once you have the data inside of the application insights, you can do a lot of stuff with it. So you can actually create alerts, connect with Power BI, maybe Visual Studio, use REST API or continuous export to analyze the logs yourself, so you have multiple ways to analyze and react to whatever is happening within your application, and this is one of the best ways to do distributed logging very easily within Azure. What does it track? First of all, the most important ones are request rates, dependency rates, and exceptions. And exception logging is one of the most powerful features of this service. It very nicely shows where exactly within your application an exception happened, what caused it, and what can you do to remediate this issue? It will even show you the entire trace of the entire request with user flows, what led to this exception. I very often found myself finding the issues with my code without even need to debug the code itself. So I really love this feature. Additionally, it tracks page views, load performance, and things like that because it really acts like Google Analytics as well, allowing you to see the user and sessions and analyze those sessions within the Azure. Additionally, it allows you to track host diagnostics and even custom events, so you can build your own events and track them within Application Insights. As you see with this, Application Insights can pretty much track most of the important stuff of your applications. This makes it one of my favorite services for monitoring in Azure. Once you actually gather the metrics, there's multiple term entry views that you can use to view the data of your logs. For instance, Application Map is another cool feature of Application Insights. It creates a visual diagram of your application based on the logs itself. So it's pretty neat that it allows you to visualize how your application is working solely based on the logs of those applications. Another view is Smart Detection View, where it grabs automated log detection for failure and performance anomalies. So if you went over for the night and something happened within your application, you will see those events grouped by the category Within this panel of smart detection, you'll get even automated alert with email notification about something happened with your application, so you can very quickly react to those. Additionally, you have usage analytics. As I said, this is one of the features that imitates Google Analytics, so you can track user retention, segmentation, demographics, and all the cool stuff about users from the perspective of the front-end application. There's also Live Metric Stream, one of the cooler features for developers, because it allows you to see your logs on the fly as they come in. So if you're developing distributed applications re in real time and you're seeing some events flying by, some requests being failed, you can actually very quickly see and react to them within this panel. 
It actually refreshes life so you can pretty much see everything as it goes and see all the dependency calls, all the request rates, all the traces, and all the errors that are happening within your application. You also have search. Search panel allows you to visualize your logs and traces on this panel and see them over the time. And if you need some more advanced features, you also have analytics panel, which allows you to write a very powerful query using custom query language. So you can actually grab your logs and write a custom SQL-like queries and see the analytics and analyze the logs yourself from entire application. And because Application Insights is very powerful, it has a lot of additional views like Metrics Explorer as it is a part of Azure Monitor. You can create dashboards out of pretty much any metrics that are stored within Application Insights. You can actually connect from Visual Studio because there's a native integration there. You can do snapshot debugging if you actually found some error in production. You can debug from memory dumps, connect with Power BI, REST API, or even do continuous export of your logs to something like blob storage and use pretty much any tool to report on your logs and analyze those logs yourself. A lot of features that you can actually use to review pretty much any logs in any way possible of your applications. And that concludes how the application insights can help you within your applications and we can actually go to live demos. Today we're going to do a lot of live demos, a lot of cool live demos. First of all, we're going to create a web application in Azure and attach application insights to this. Then we're going to create a server-side monitoring using .NET Core. Then we're going to do a client-side monitoring. So we're going to track our jQuery-like application. We're going to be debugging with failure views and going to imitate some issues within our code and try to debug it live. Additionally, I'm going to investigate the performance. I'm going to query the application telemetry logs in log analytics. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to do it without even using the code. So a codeless monitoring of application insights. So what is the demo architecture for today? First of all, we're going to set up a very simple jQuery application, which will connect to a server side API, which was written in .NET Core. And then we're going to funnel the logs to application insights. After this, we're going to create a small function app, which will call external Azure services, a queue service and a blob service. And everything from that, we're going to funnel to application insights so that we can see this nice application map at the end, which will show us our architecture and entire dependency calls from end-to-end -end perspective. So let's go to the portal. So let's create a web application and attach application insights to this. To do that, let's go to create resource, type web app, and search for web app. This is Azure application service. Let's hit create. Let's create a new resource group called app insights intro. Let's give the same name to the, our service. Let's see if it's free. It is, so let's use that. I'm going to choose the runtime stack as .NET Core 3.0 and I'm going to host myself in North Europe. I'm going to choose an app service plan. I'm just going to change the name so this is more convenient for me. And I'm just going to leave it as S1 by default. Next, I'm going to go to monitoring tab, in which case it says, do you also want to provision application insights with this service? In which case I'm saying, yes, I do. And I'm going to hit create new give it the same name and just review and create and hit create. Right now, this will create two services for me. One being an app service. This is my hosting environment for my front-end application. And another will be application insights that will automatically get tied to this app service by default. I'm going to show you later that in the configuration tab when this service is created. And after that, I'm going to actually show you how can you extend it to another application using the same application insights instance? My services will be provisioned in just a couple of seconds, after which you just click, go to the resource to review what was created. Right now, there's nothing here because I didn't deploy any application yet. But if I will go to my resource group, you'll actually notice that first of all, we have app service plan hosting our app service. So this is our compute power, but we also have application insight service. If you go to Application Insights, you will see the most important stuff, which is the connection string and instrumentation key. This is like your password for the Application Insights. This is again very similar to how Google Analytics works. And it's a good example. And there's a lot of panels that we're going to be going through today a lot. So right now I'm going to leave them there. So let's go back to our application. Let's go back to our app service. And now it is something interesting. Here within Settings tab, 
in the configuration pane, you can find the default configuration for that environment and one of those application settings as you see are upsetting the instrumentation key, which is the key value for your service. So you don't really have to configure anything additionally. By default, any application deployed to this app service will use those variables by default whenever deployed to this app service instance. So this is pretty cool. Of course, if you already have app in service, you don't really have to do this and redeploy entire service. You can simply create just application insights and input those parameters in the configuration. So it's up to you. All right, so what's the demo? Since we have the service provision, let's actually create a very small application. I have a lot of samples for you today. And first of all, we're gonna create the new .NET application using .NET new MVC. I have two windows of Visual Studio Code, one with my samples and a second one with empty folder called demo where I'm gonna create my project. So as we see, we need .NET new MVC. So I'm gonna run this command in a terminal to create a sample web application within .NET Core. Once I do that, the next thing that you need to do is to add Microsoft Application Insights for ASP.NET Core package. So I'm gonna add the package. And the demo that we're doing here is using the code to report application logs. But there's also a way to do this codeless on app services, which I'm gonna show you later. For now, let's add the package. And once the package is added, you need to do two things. First of all, you need to add this application insights section to your code, to the application settings development setting. So you can just add it here and add this new section. And this is actually the, the decision for you to make. If you add this section here and add the instrumentation key, you will be actually also logging everything from your local development environment. So it's up to you whenever you want to do it or not. I usually do it but in this case demo, it's not required. If you do want to log from the local development, also add this to app setting. And the next thing that you need to do is add the telemetry setting. So you need to add this line, services add application insights telemetry. And you need to do it before add controller with views, or if you're using older version of .NET Core, this will be before services add MVC. So let's grab this line and it has to be done within startup CS file. So let's go to the startup CS file and let's find this add controller reviews and let's add this additional line here. Once this line is added and the file is saved, let's add the additional view. So what we did so far is that we added server side monitoring and this is pretty much as simple as it gets. Just the single line with the package and your application is already doing server side monitoring. If this is so easy, let's see how easy it is to add a client-side monitoring for our jQuery application. To do that, go back to our snippets and copy this raw HTML, which will add the snippet for our views. So let's go to views, shared, go to the layout, and pretty much inside of the header, find the head section, and at the end of the head section, insert this. This will pretty much the output inclusion for JavaScript snippet for the application insights. And to ensure this works, you also need to add within the view imports another line, which actually injects application insights, JavaScript snippets to your tags. And you can actually review it by this squiggly line disappearing. At this point, you actually set up both server side monitoring and client side monitoring. And to test that, let's actually implement a very small API and very small application on the front end side. Since the setup is complete, now it's up to us to test it. I paused the video here for a second to fix the order of the files because I noticed it's incorrect. The next thing that you need to do is add a controller. We need a controller so that when we call an endpoint, we actually have an endpoint to call and I called it demo controller. So just copy this entire file and go to your application, open controllers folder, create new file, call it demo controller cs and paste in the code. So here, what it does is actually calls the function, which we will supply in a second by this function URL. But until you do so, you can actually comment these lines out and just return text, hello world. This will return a very simple response saying hello world to our JavaScript application. Once you have this done, 
you can actually go back and go to this pane and copy the add button HTML. So let's copy that. This is from this add button demo API HTML and go to our home view, to our index and add this entire HTML at the very back of the screen. We can very quickly test if everything is working by hitting F5 to run this application using .NET Core. And if everything worked fine, we should see our application running. This is how I created a very small app running locally. I added a message here, remember to disable Adblock, because as I originally said, application insights are working like Google Analytics. So if you have something like uBlock Origin, it will actually block the application insights as well. So remember to disable it. Once you disable it, you can actually call functions and see the hello world message. If everything worked fine at this point, you can actually deploy this to Azure and see the telemetry already running. So let's do that. Let's close this application. Let's close the debug session and let's deploy this application to Azure. To do that, let's open the editor, go to the Azure extension tab here. Let's open our Azure App Services. Let's refresh to find our newly created App Insights Intro App Service. Let's right click, hit deploy to web app. Let's select the demo folder that we're in and let's add a configuration for deployment. Just hit deploy, close all the panes and let it run. All right, the deployment finished, so we can actually hit the browse website to open external website, this is our Azure App Service actually already within Azure. So if you call hello world, you can actually see this running. This means at this point, we can actually go back to application insights and start reviewing the logs. So let's go back to Azure portal. Let's go back to application insights. And there's a lot of stuff that you can actually see here. But the first one that we want to do is go to live metric stream because it's the first place and the earliest place where you're gonna see your logs. Other panels have like five, 10 minute delay on whatever is happening, but here you're gonna see everything live. So we have this request pane as you see some requests were coming through. So let's go back to application. Let's hit the button couple more times. As you see, I'm pressing it a lot. Let's go back to our application. As you see, big spike, because something was happening some requests were flying and you see that currently in the panel. So you already know that the telemetry is set up correctly and application insights are gathering the logs from your application. So let's close this panel and let's go to application map. If I will go to application map by default, notice that I already started gathering some logs. First of all, it noticed that we have one instance of our application. This is one the app service running the application. There were already 10 calls made to this application. On average, it was 4.8 millisecond per call and currently only one instance is running. When you hit on it, you can see what are the requests that were made. Since we're only refreshing the homepage, we see get and slash on the homepage and average response time. If you would be going back to application and switching the pages between home, privacy, in just a couple of minutes, you're gonna see those pages appearing there. And if you're gonna call more functions, and you go back here and refresh it after a couple of minutes, you're gonna see more requests. Notice something interesting what happened right now. I refreshed and I already noticed that we're getting some information, but it's still only six calls because there's a small delay on the logging part. We have app insights intro and the client. This means those are the calls made from the JavaScript. There are six calls made to external service. This is our actually web service. Notice that it did actually not figure out that this service is this backend service, but we're going to fix that in a second. But you can actually see that all the calls were made. We were calling the API slash demo. Average response time was 66 milliseconds and all the cool stuff. So let's actually close this for a second and let's go back to application insights and refresh. After a moment, it was actually able to figure out that the client calls were actually to our backend. So it actually combined this into a single instance of our application, allowing us to review the client side part, the JavaScripts, the calls made to the backend, get API demo, and all the application insights. Oh, sorry, I actually closed this for my mistake. And you can actually review all the calls on the backend. Notice that we're getting some libraries, the bootstrap, the home index, the jQuery, 
all the things that we're doing on the backend as well. So let's add a bit, a bit more complexity to our application. So let's create a function app very quickly. Create resource type function. There's gonna be a function app available. Let's hit create. And very quickly create a function app which will serve as our backend service and internal API for the background jobs. So let's pick the same resource group. Let's call it app insights function. Let's choose the runtime stack of .NET Core as well. Same region, which is North Europe for me. But before you hit review and create, go to the next tab, which is the monitoring. And inside of the monitoring, instead of choosing to use the new application insights, choose the existing one already. So that make sure that application insights are actually serving both app servers and the function app at the same time. Hit review and create and hit create. After a minute, the function has been provisioned, so I'm gonna go to the resource. And within the function app, I'm gonna create a very small RESTful endpoint for our application. So I'm gonna choose in this case, developing the portal. While you should not do it for production, it's very cool for demo purposes. So let's hit webhook plus API. Let's hit create and let it create very small HTTP function. For now, we don't need most of that. What is it within the function? We can actually remove most of it and just leave the message of hello, Adam. So let's remove that. Let's leave hello, Adam message. Let's save this. And to review that this actually everything runs correctly, we can actually open the portal in the new tab. Go to our resource group, app insights intro. Go to the application insights, live metrics stream. And in here, you will be able to review the functions. And to do that, let's hit run a couple of times and see the functions being already executed. You can see the traces from the function as you see request successfully match the route, executed C sharp HTTP trigger function process the request, which is our first message here. That means the tracing and the login is currently working just fine. And to work with that, we can actually grab this function URL from here. Let's copy that and let's go to our web application and let's go back to our call. Let's close this window. Let's open our demo control controller. Let's paste the URL here with the function code. Of course, you should not leave that function code there for production, but for the demo, it's okay. And let's uncomment this section and return the text. Now let's just deploy this to our app service. The deployment finish, hit browse the website, sure that open external website, call functions, and you see, hello Adam, this is the response from our Azure function. I'm gonna close this window and go back to our application insights now. So as you see, the live metric stream are showing that something is happening with our, our applications. We can go to application insights, go to application map, and wait here for just a couple of minutes. After a couple of minutes, I'm just gonna hit refresh to see the new result. As you see, now we can see entire dependency chain happening from our jQuery to our backend to our background service in the back. And also you can see two instances that are happening for the function, one for the front end. You can review all the calls. We made only one get for the API HTTP trigger that we created for the functions, the average response time and everything like that. So let's close this demo by adding one more thing to our application. Very quickly, let's enhance the applications by adding some queues and storage accounts. So let's do copy this entire code into the functions. So let's go to the function apps. Actually, we have this already opened here. Let's paste this here. And let's also grab the code for the bindings. So let's save that. Let's go to files. Of course, it's gonna fail now because I didn't add new bindings. I need to go to function JSON. Let's add the bindings. Let's hit save. It should compile successfully. So let's close that in. Let's go back here. Actually, I'm missing comma here. Let's save that. And see compilation succeeded. Right now, this will actually try to save the bindings. And what it will do is actually save a message to the queue called demo queue and it will save to the container called demo container and it will save it to the default storage that is used for those functions 
overall reason is to show you the dependency calls to an external service that you don't have control over, like the blob storage and the queue service. So let's go back to our application. Let's go to the front end. Let's open the website and let's call the function a couple more times. As you see, we're still getting hello Azure. So everything works correctly. But what we can also review is that within Azure resource group, we can go to the storage account that is used for the functions and we can open the storage explorer to review two things. First of all, the blob storage, the demo container. As you see, for every call we're making, there's a new blob. And let's hit review. More blobs. And the same for the queue. So I'm pretty much outputting all the messages to the blob and to the queue at the same time. And reason to do that is to show you how powerful application insights really are. And to do that, I can actually go back now to application insights, go to the application map and review after just a couple of minutes that the new dependency chain. And I will need to hit review a couple of times. I just need to wait a minute or two. So let's hit refresh right now. And notice something interesting. Client app, backend service, background service, and two external dependency calls to our services. Do you notice know something familiar about this diagram? This is pretty much the diagram of our architecture that we drawn in the beginning for the demo purposes. We are actually able to draw the same diagram using the logs alone and nothing else. This is what is amazing about the application map and application instance in general. We are making distributed logging across multiple services and yet application instance is actually able to combine those in a singular calls. This is pretty much one of the coolest features of the service. All right, time so for last some demos, very quick demos about failures and trace detection. So let's open live metric stream. And in the meanwhile, let's go back to the functions to make a very small mistake in the code. So let's open function apps and let's try to convert something into integer that cannot be converted. I'm pretty sure this will fail every time at the line 22. And remember that line number. If we go back to our application and call functions multiple times, Notice that I didn't get any response. Something probably failed on the backend. And I made a mistake on the purpose here because I wanted to be sure that my frontend doesn't show anything, yet we'll be able to trace it back. So let's go to, first of all to live metric stream. Notice that we already see some failure rates happening in the real time. And while you could sit here and see this in the live, the usual case is that you're not sitting and not watching the live metric stream. What you would do on the other hand is go to application insights, go to application map. And after a couple of minutes, I'm going to refresh this page to show you how to investigate this error. Let's hit refresh again to see some of the errors already happening on the backend. And you can actually very quickly see this is happening within functions. You can click on this. You can see top failing request HTT trigger one. You can click on it. And this is very powerful feature. First of all, it shows you the errors over the time. It groups them by the error message, by the type of the exception, what kind of fate dependencies did it have. So in this case, you can actually quickly see format exception. Let's hit on this one, can't two, so it happened twice. It groups you and finds you the most common mistake it, and it shows it as suggested. So you can actually click on this to go even deeper and notice a lot of cool features in here. First of all, this one. Notice that it shows me entire session from my client web application, calling my backend API. I can actually close this to get even more real estate. Then calling my backend service and then calling the functions and then function executing. And then all the dependencies calling the checking. So the head, is there any blob on the blob storage Then putting the blob, doing the same, etc., etc. all those dependencies until you get to the point where there was error happening. Notice that it still recognizes that this is everything within one session. And at some point I made a call that actually happened and finished with exception. When you click on this exception, you will see those error messages here. And the cool thing is this checkbox here, just my code. When you click on it and scroll down, notice that in line 22, I've made an error. If you remember correctly, this is actually line 22. So it pointed me out exactly where within my function code did I make mistake that caused this issue. So I didn't really have to even deep dive and debug my session to see where I made a mistake. An even more powerful feature is here, a snapshot debugger. If you want to use it, 
you can actually debug this live using Visual Studio. But for now, this is it. This is actually a pretty powerful profiler that you can use to trace end-to-end -end transaction details of your application and telemetry. If you want, you can also use application map to investigate the slow performance of your request, or you can use performance tab to do so. Here you're gonna see pretty much similar to errors pane, where you can actually trace all the requests by their time and find the most clogging requests on your backend API. And also for those, review what was happening and how did it actually, what were the common parameters for those requests that were slow. So it actually will group by and try to navigate you to those slow requests. So you have common de denominator that caused the slow performance. You will actually very easily find it using this feature. And lastly, you can actually use either search, as I said, to review those logs here, or you can do something better by going to overview, hitting logs on the top, and you can actually write those queries to see your traces and requests. So you can actually type requests, limit 50, press shift enter to see the live logs of your application. And this is pretty powerful language. I really advise you to learn Custo because it's being introduced into more and more service. It's part of Log Analytics, Application Insights, Azure uh, Data Explorer, and probably in future more services. It's a really nice language. It will allow you to combine the logs into single view and even then either export this to Power BI or add it and pin it to dashboard as a live diagram. It can also change to charts so you can review your logs as a chart. And all that is pretty cool, but what happens if you don't want to change the logs to log your application insight metrics? Many services within Azure actually supports application insights out of the box. So instead of adding this um, package to my code, adding this package to my front end and tracking everything, what you can do actually for some services within Azure, you can actually go to like an app service an app service has this tab here, Application Insights, where you can actually enable your out-of-the-box agents without changing your code. And if you're using any of your applications here, it will actually allow you to set up without setting up within your code. This is the codeless setup for Application Insights. And there's a lot of additional stuff and a lot of additional services that support this out-of-the-box. So you not always have to change your code to take the advantage of Application Insights. And lastly, what I want to show you just additional views within Application Insights. So here are the metrics. So this is the part of Azure Monitor. You can even do alerts on this. So you can alert yourself whenever there are failed requests. You can use Smart Detection, which later on will show you the common errors here, group by category. There's also a way for you to create an automated availability tests, so it will test to your application whenever it goes down, it will notify you, although it is pretty expensive because it's $10 per one availability tests. But don't forget that you also have this Google-like analytics within the usage, so you can track users, session, events, funnels, or even do like user flows for your entire application, what was happening in your backend and frontend, and how was the user navigating through your application. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot more features. Application Insights is a very powerful service that you should take advantage whenever you're deploying a front-end or back-end or multi-service applications within Azure. Wow, we went through so many demos in such a quick time. I hope you caught up, but I just wanted to show you how powerful Application Insights really are and how many things you can achieve with such a simple setup, yet such a powerful service for logging and telemetry. If you're developing cross-service applications using multiple components, this should be your service to go for those purposes. But for today, that's it. If you like the video, hit thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe if you want to see more. And definitely see you next time.